And from the lands of Sápmi, we now move to the government halls of Sweden for a greeting from the Swedish Minister of Culture, Ms. Amanda Lind. Dear Carla 2020 conference participants, wherever in the world you may be, in a completely different time and a completely different world, I would be standing in front of you right now, welcome you to Sweden and Karlskrona. But that's not the way it's turned out. In 2020, we are forced to adapt to completely new situations. 2020 was supposed to be a year with special focus on gender equality in the film industry. The 5050 by 2020 initiative was launched by the Swedish Film Institute in 2016 as a concrete effort to achieve gender equal film production, both in front of and behind the camera. And the initiative was adopted by film festivals and other industry events globally. And this year, we had intended to summarize, to discuss, and to look ahead. And it was my impression that the discussion about the situation of women in the film industry had also become more intense. The focus of the second anniversary of the Swedish Me Too initiative for film, Silence Action, was on representation and ethnic diversity. And the stories about social exclusion, discrimination, ignorance and racism were deeply disturbing. And I'm probably not alone in worrying about what impact the COVID-19 pandemic will have on discussions like this. When life and death issues take over news feeds, our thoughts and our conversations, it's easy for everything else to get drawn out. But the pandemic year of 2020 also seems to be a year when we raise fundamental questions about what kind of world we want to live. For example, the Black Lives Matter movement has touched us deeply and raised new questions, including how we deal with dark chapters in our own country's histories. The consequences of wrongs committed in the past affects the lives, the identity and the well-being of descendants of the victims to this day. And these memories arouse feelings of guilt and shame and are often met with silence. And that is why we must give visibility to the violations and to the abuse that groups such as indigenous peoples, national minorities and minorities have been subjected to. And in Sweden, the film Sami Blood became a milestone. It dramatically increased interest and knowledge about the history and situation of the Sami people. But it also opened up new possibilities for taking the work forward by political means. And in Sweden, the Swedish government recently took important steps to examine its own role in the historical violations and injustices committed against the Tornedalian national minority and the Sami indigenous people. And that's not something I'm very proud of. It is possible to deal with dark chapters in a country's history. Politicians, like myself, must be willing to try. We all must be willing to try. It's never too late to try to correct a wrong. Your role is important and your work is crucial. Film as an art form helps us to discover injustices and social exclusion in our time, so that we can try to prevent history from repeating itself. Films can highlight those individuals and groups that have a hard time making themselves heard today. And in difficult times, it is particularly important that we continue to meet, if not physically, then digitally. More than ever, we need to share experiences and knowledge and hear each other's stories. The sense of isolation and resignation that easily engulfs us must be broken. And that is why it is so important that this year's Kala conference is taking place and driving these important issues further. So thank you for continuing your efforts. I wish you every success and I look very much forward to following your work. Yes, that was the greeting from the Swedish Minister of Culture, Democracy and Sports forgot some of those, Ms. Amanda Lind. And again, like looking at this with 
with, with an, an external eye suddenly it does strike me that while we in the Nordic countries do have a lot of work uh, left to do uh, when it comes to, to justice and, and equality, we do have what would on the international stage be considered a fair amount of relatively young women in a lot of the Nordic governments. Um, and I think that that has, I mean, obviously I have my local bias here, but for me it feels like that has, for instance, affected how we have spoken uh, about the pandemic and, and the many other big issues of the day in our countries this year.